Most people bet against us, like, I don't know. We're always the underdogs. I see our faces, no friends between them. 제가 프로 게임을 하기 전에 저도 그런 스포츠들을 볼때 약간 계속 이기는 팀보다는 도전하는 팀? 그런 팀을 응원하긴 했거든요, 저도. Who doesn't want to see an upset happen? Who doesn't want to see an end to the SKT era finally? Who doesn't want to finally not see SKT as the world champion? 네, 제가 그 계속 이기는 팀원의 이런 중한 명으로서 개인적으로는 절대 지고 싶지 않고 그냥 계속 이기기 싶기 때문에 최대한 이겨야죠. We are about to write history if we win against SKT, and no one can take that away from us. SKT가 8강에서 떨어지게 된다면 엄청난 부록감과 타격을 입을 것 같아요. 다시 디펜딩 챔피언으로 거듭나는 게 목표입니다. Hello and welcome back to the beautiful Guangzhou, China. Here you see misfits who will be stepping off the butts, getting ready for their fight of their lives in this tournament up against the reigning champions in SK Telecom making their way to the stadium or the stage rather just moments ago. You can hear the crowd cheering behind me. Lots of fandom in this building looking at those reigning champions as well as some misfit fans out there. People hoping for that upset however unlikely it might be. Let's remember that last night, Samsung Galaxy rocked Pickums across the world, dominating against Longzhi. But now it's time to throw it down to Rendong on stage. Introduce <laughs> First team out here, Misfits, the challengers tonight. First, we invite the Misfits to the Misfits. Second seed out of Europe, Samsung Galaxy. Second seed out of Europe. They shocked the world with their run through the group stage, qualifying through and now challenging the reigning champions. Shanglu, Afari. Daye, Max Law. Zhonglu, Power of Evil. Xiaolu, Hesama. Fuzhu, Ignar. Together, welcome their coach, Hosei, and Tipu Fuzhu, Heva. Three-time world champions, two-time defending champions, perhaps the greatest, not perhaps, they are the greatest team to ever play League of Legends. Shanglu, Huni. Daye Peanut Zhonglu Faker Xiaolu Ben Fuzhu Wolf Blank.
Dominating 3-0 performance out of Samsung Galaxy, taking down Long Zoo just yesterday. SK Telecom and Misfits Gaming take to the stage for our second quarterfinal. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm James Dash Patterson. I'm joined by this talented trio, Indiana Prosper and Black, Chris, Papa Smithy Smith, and Joshua Jatt. Leesman, yesterday's series was absolutely crazy. Of course, went contrary to all of the predictions. How excited are we to get our second quarterfinal under the way? I mean, it's very exciting. It would also be a massive upset if anything other than the expected result happens. I mean, it's SK Telecom T1. We're used to seeing this team in the final. Very much so. Well, we're not the only team bringing you the action today. Our international broadcast partners are at the ready to bring the games to regions all across the globe. Here you see some shots of their different casting booths here set up in the beautiful Guangzhou Gymnasium. And as we gear up for our next series, let's go ahead and pull up the bracket. Today's match pits SK Telecom T1 versus Misfits Gaming with EU's Fnatic loading onto the rift opposite RNG on Saturday. Then North America's Cloud9 hopes to upset the LPL's Team WE and earn that last spot in Shanghai. But we can't jump into today's series without acknowledging Samsung Galaxy's huge upset win over Longzhu just yesterday. Yeah, and Longju was the favorite from that side of the bracket to reach the final. Even looking at Pick'em, 66% of people had Longju appearing in the final. But as far as their issues coming into Worlds, they didn't matter until yesterday. Because during the group stage, it didn't matter that they weren't playing tank top laners, that they had three Worlds rookies. But it was all exploited by Samsung, who I feel like played very well. Yeah, Samsung's preparation, I think, was super notable about this series. Their ability to come in absolutely have a great read, understand what they needed to do and how it would fit against their opponents. It's the sort of thing they've done in fits and spurts. They don't always manage it, but in this big knockout best of five, they certainly pulled it up. And frankly, coming into the very early stages of the tournament, before we saw Samsung start to stumble, Crumbs and I did have a conversation on desk where we're like, Samsung might be favorites to win the tournament. It makes sense in a uh, meta that is all about team fighting, that is very slow to build, that maybe they wouldn't be punished. Suddenly, we saw Longju sprinting off the finish line and just demolishing teams. And we saw really the two styles clash yesterday, that very fast, aggressive style versus the slow patient. And Samsung won out through that great draft and the ability to absorb so much of that pressure. Yeah, well, I feel like Samsung also did a great job finding early game proactivity. Ambition didn't get a first blood or assist in five group stage games, but he was all over the place with four kills pre-15 minutes in the first two games against Longju. So very much I feel like Samsung found a way to bridge to their great team play. Experience and adaptability key in winning that series yesterday. We'll see how experience plays into today's series as Misfits, a novice squad to the world stage, takes on SK Telecom T1 of all teams. I, I do want to take a moment though to really celebrate Misfits' victory or, or pathway, excuse me, not victory yet, they haven't won it yet, uh, but pathway to this giant mountain that they now have to climb in SKT. A lot of people look at them as like the fairy tale run, but to me it's almost more like the Odyssey. You know, they're not this this, this carriage that is going to turn into a pumpkin. Yes, we're kind of waiting for midnight to strike, but it's this idea that domestically they already made that great climb. You know, they took down Unicorns of Love. They took down Fnatic. These were all upsets. Yes, they lost to the Kings of Europe, but they came out in a group with TSM and Flash Wolves, number one seed from LMS as well as North America were in there. At this point, they've already proven that they're a good team, and they didn't just wander into this quarterfinal by accident. And I do feel, though, on the other side with SKT, their results didn't really show the full story. They actually started 3-0 and then went 2-1, which is the reverse. Usually they're slow to warm up. I think in terms of gameplay and in terms of reading the meta, that was still there. I still feel like first week SKT was playing League of Legends very different to second week SKT. In the second week, they gambled more on Hooney, this man who hadn't played the majority of the summer season, really setting up Hooney in particular to take a lot of the mid game, draft the Jace, draft four, lane presence and playing around a strong top lane after having kind of three losing lanes mm. at times helped them overall. Yeah, and I think if you were to put on your tunnel vision goggles and say, let's just look at exactly the group stage games that is agnostic of opponents, you'd be like, man, Mystic has, or sorry, Misfits has an insanely good early game. 1,000 gold up on average of 50 minutes. SKT's early game is really bad. They've been down 800 gold at 15 minutes. Misfits could win the early game and smash SKT. But then you take the blinders off and you realize that SKT has lost three games in the history of group stage. Four years worth of group stage, 23 and three. Misfits lost three games in two weeks, right? The difference between the history of these two teams is so massive. And yes, SKT's early game was weak in that group stage, but 
this is a whole different ball game once you get onto the quarterfinal stage. For me, it's also really important to nail down exactly where SKT are finding these big comebacks. It's one thing to step back and look at, you know, those crazy initiations where Wolf finds, you know, five people with their calm, but like what led to that? And it's their defensive vision. The fact that they never let up on that really strong control. So even when they're falling behind, they still find these pockets of fog of war where they can trap you. Uh, misfits, on the other hand, even when they do get those massive leads, we saw it in the Flash Wolves game. They kind of get stalled out. They're not playing very well on vision. They just kind of wander into some of these team fights. And I think that's where the big mismatch will happen between these teams, even if Misfits does get that lead. I think those defensive fundamentals you talk about, the vision, playing from behind, which they certainly showed they can do, will only serve them to really be a baseline here. I feel like we've seen kind of the lowest ceiling possible for SK Telecom at Worlds. It's from building from there compared to what Samsung had to build from is a much easier process. So I think obviously we were kind of shocked by how good Samsung was yesterday. I think if SKT build on that decent fundamental, they're going to reach a level we haven't seen from them maybe all year. But if we're talking about potential mismatches, we've got to talk about perhaps the most vulnerable player on SKT in Peanut matching up against the early game catalyst for misfits here in Maxlore. I mean, the thing is, is yes, Peanut has been a little bit uh non-existent in the early game for SKT, but he is placing a lot of that vision that we just talked about that are so crucial to their comebacks. On the other side, it's a guy like Maxor. And even with the Plank, uh, Plank, the Peanut Blank, that should just be their, their troll, couple's name. Uh, even with Blank trying to download Maxlor in the back, it's actually very difficult. This guy doesn't just rely on tendencies. He changes not just game to game, but minute to minute in his creative pathing about where he's playing around his team's win condition. You know what does change from game to game? Whether they're playing Peanut or Blank. Peanut will start game one. This is always their strategy. They rely on Peanut. He can be an aggressive weapon. We haven't seen it at all at Worlds Group Stage. We know that he can adapt. You know, we're surprised to see Ambition. It'll be no surprise to see Peanut adapt here. They also have Blank, who has that Really big advantage, he kind of plays with map packs because he can watch game one, sit there with his coach, observe what happens in the game, then use the information he gains to make smart pathing choices, which is his best way to play. Ironically, the role that Bengi was playing for the team last year. All right, well, with all this in mind, it's come to that time where I ask you for your mm -hmm. predictions. Do the reigning champions in SK Telecom T1 or the newcomers in Misfits take the series and who moves on to Shanghai? Uh I'll remind you that yesterday, all three of my analysts went with the expected, and then that definitely didn't happen. Mm -hmm. That said, Take it away. yesterday, those two teams had a massive history with each other. They definitely knew how to prepare. This time around, Misfits are, again, standing at the base of a mountain and looking up at an impossible task. I think this is SKT 3-0. I think it's a very easy, clean 3-0. OK, Papa Smithy? You know, I'm right there with your frescura, and uh, I got a similar analogy. I, I think we did see lightning strike yesterday, but there were those very small clouds surrounding. You didn't see them. They certainly weren't overwhelming the sky. You thought it was Longzhu. It ended up being a Samsung day. It's a pristine blue summer's day here today. I think SK Telecom T1, clean 3-0. No second lightning strike. Jat? Yeah, I mean, it's incredibly difficult to look at this matchup and not say SKT 3-0, based on the history of them in group stage and making it all the way to the world final. And when I look at SKT in the group stage versus bracket stage, they play every group stage game like game one of a best of five, where they're feeling out their opponents, seeing the best they got, and then just playing a generic strategy. And more often than not, SKT's final game in the series is the most convincing one. So I do think it's possible, but not probable, that Misfits take a game in this series early on, when they're hitting SKT with everything they got, and before the SKT that we know just morphs into the team that counters everything Misfits wants to do. Overwhelming support for the 3-0 here in favor of SK Telecom, and Jat sort of preempted the question here, but I will press you. Where does Misfits win, if at all, one game or more? to move on to the semifinals. For me, it's specifically the bot lane. I don't know if a SKT will make adaptations in their draft phase, but they have been predominantly about the Twitch pick. Maybe they start going towards that Caitlyn, maybe they mix things up, but Han Samal on the other side is going for the Zaya. Ignar is looking for the Thrash, the Blitzcrank. They can certainly run a kill lane and really start to cause problems for Bang and Wolf and snowball the game from there specifically. Yeah, and I feel like the mythos of SKT makes us think that them losing a game is impossible in these situations, but it has happened before for sure. And then we look at the way Misfits plays the early game. There is a world in which they can get a few games, but it's like, would you rather fight 
against a 1500 pound grizzly bear, which would be SKT last year. And then this year, it's, oh yeah, this is the weakest they've ever looked. There's still a grizzly bear and you're still trying to fight it with your bare hands. Like sure, there are cases where it's happened. Right. The guy has beaten the grizzly bear or run away and made it jump off a cliff. Fingers crossed. I've gone way too far with this analogy. I like it though, I like it. Well, my analysts are not alone because 98% of all pickums have SKT taking the win and heading to the semifinals. And for what it's worth, only one player in all pickums still has a perfect bracket and that player from um, LAN chose SKT to take the series today. Good on you, mate. You're doing well. Now, before we jump into the match, Misfits, or uh, mid laner rather, Power of Evil shares what it's like to go against the Demon King himself in the quarterfinals. That's like this one YouTube video. No ulti on that Alistar. They're going for it. They know oh! another one. Four kills now for Power of Evil. And Faker, you can see him in the camera. He's like, oh, did you guys see that? Like, this was really good, you know? And Seeing this from such a, I would say, like insane and strong person, like gives me a lot of confidence. He could see enough bots from me, he could learn enough from me, so now he should experience me on the rift. Excitement and passion from Power of Evil, and we hope to see that from Misfits in game. Hello, everyone. I'm Riving the Business III, joined by this dapper duo of Martin DeFisio Lung and Isaac Azale Cummings Bentley. Gentlemen, you're three inches, four inches taller than me. I look up to you. <laughs> How are you feeling today? Tell me. Give me some answers. Uh, I'm feeling good, and i got to say, you're looking pretty dapper yourself, Riv. Thank you so I just want to fight a grizzly bear right now. I know. Show it can happen, actually. The whole thing can maybe do not it. supposed to fight a grizzly bear. Oh, but I can probably beat it. Okay. That's all right. It, they are a lighter grizzly bear this year, as Jat said, so possibly Misfits has the way to get in there with their confidence. It's something I have seen from this team that it's more than confidence. It's an all-around mentality because when confidence is knocked down, you find yourself in that spot of not talking to your team, right. not being able to call things. I feel like Misfits has the ability to get around that and they can use that against SKT. And that's always why game one is so important. When you're playing against a team like SKT, if you go in here and you can actually win the first game, you get that confidence, you can actually take another one as well. But if you lose the first one, Suddenly, you start realizing you're playing against the best team in the world. Exactly. We are into picks and bans. Let's see what homework these teams have done. I think so much, as you said, is going to be about those early games because SKT also improves and adapts throughout the series. They're able to kind of feel out what kind of strategy you're trying to do. And unless you have about 10 different strategies you can pick from that could beat SKT, it's going to get harder and harder and harder for you as they adapt, as they shift in the picks and bans. Let's see if Misfits can find one strategy that can actually beat SKT, the first pick and ban phase here. The Janna being banned obviously prompts the Lulu ban on the other side, and I think Misfits are very happy regarding this because if they can get Ignar away from just a pure shielding support, they tend to be a lot more happy. They want to have him on some sort of engage. We've seen the Thresh, we've seen the Blitzcrank. He can play Tarek as well. I think this is actually better for Misfits than SKT specifically. And you can see how much they're trying to take them off the traditional high priority Arden supports. Even the Rakan ban coming through, yeah. which is often left up and you do end up in those Tarek versus Rakan type matchups. I do think that Tarek will be very strong here. And I like the first draft round for the Misfits quite a lot, I think. Jarvan works so well with Tarek because it gives you an easy use case for the ultimate. You're going forward, you have that guaranteed engage, and you can also pair up very well with the Bastion for that additional stuff. Exactly, and now the normal Arden Sensor answer would be a Karma. Now this Trundle here, you might think this is top lane Trundle already, but it can be flexed down to support, and you right. can still go Arden Sensor on Trundle support with the Stone Horn as your keystone. We can talk more about that in-game, so that actually is a fine answer for Wolf against this Tarek. And actually some really fast picks coming here for SKT, putting that pressure on Misfits a little bit as they get all their champions in. We're already in the second phase. I do have to say though, I am a little bit worried already for Misfits with the Galio on SKT's side. The Galio has been so ridiculously effective in this tournament, 75% win rate at Worlds. And when you talk about, okay, well, how do you give Misfits a game? They smash you in the early game, it's full out aggression. What stops full out aggression? What roams across the map and yeah. answers those sort of plays very well? Well, it's the Galio. Yeah. It's also exceptionally hard to pick on and gank in the mid lane because of the wave clear, because of the tankiness. So that is a worry that I have already. I 100% agree with that one. I never like to see Galio go through the ban phase. Rice is a pick Power Beevil likes to take against the Galio specifically. Uh, one of the reasons is obviously the laning phase is not an issue for the Rise, and then you can actually use your ulti to try and go to side lanes, and you can then match a Galio side lane pressure, and you can actually be the first one to make the play as well, and you can create picks with the Rise specifically, and 
If it's left open, he might go towards it, even though it's been a very unsuccessful pick doing worlds. Yeah, and it certainly does have the ability to, to be successful, especially in these early skirmishes, if you are going out to the side lanes. But I always have a concern of a Rise versus a tank heavy team. And you already have this super beefy front line yep. being picked up. And when you don't have backline access from your mid laner, you know, as this Rise, you have to use this line skill shot of your Q to get most of your damage out. It's all blocked up by this super tanky front line. You often are not putting out the kind of pressure you need to, but okay. A pretty aggressive team from Misfits here. Really just that Yasuo of aggression from Alfari, but he brings in the Rumble, only having okay. played tanks here at Worlds. It's Caitlyn as well coming in now from SKT. They did not show AD carry in the first phase. They lost the two main late game carries. They like to pick for Bang, and he goes over to Caitlyn. It's not with the Janna, who is sitting there and just perma pushing the lane 24-7, right. but Trundle is still more than fine down in this bot lane here to still play this very aggressive early laning from Caitlyn. And it still could be a more traditional support, but it is going to be that flex pick trundle support. Jace up in the top side into the rumble. That's somewhere where there might be a lot of jungle attention because it is this carry versus carry matchup. Uh, but, you know, it's very clearly a focus on the early team fights for Misfits with the Terra, with the rumble ultimate, using J4 to actually set up that equalizer very well. But I think that SKT are going to have some very strong lanes and going to be able to kind of withstand that perhaps already with the Galio. You have a pushing bot lane with the advantage of Caitlyn. You have advent advantages on the top side as well. I think that's why Pau Vivo is saying, you know what? Screw it. I don't care about late game. I need something early game that can try and snowball my team here. Yep. Goes for this rise pick. We have to remember the Galio could still swap the top, which is where it's sitting at the moment. And you put the Jace mid. We saw Xiao Hu early in the tournament take the Jace specifically against the rise in that mid lane. So SKT have that option still. Yeah, and building into something like the Adaptive Helm as well as the Abyssal Mask on the Galio into the Rumble matchup can make it very hard for Rumble to really kind of push those advantages. And Rumble is a pushing champion if you're going to be push in, but not relevant as they have a swap out there. So will be Galio mid as is the more standard and I think works better in general because of the access to both of the side lanes. Also gives a very strong top lane for both teams to actually play around. Uh, it's not the standard tank be tank up there. Both junglers can definitely start paying attention towards it even though SKT's strategy has actually been leave Huni alone. He's on an island, and then you play around bot side with all your vision. When you have a Jace against the Rumble, you got to respect that enemy jungler can show up and kill your Jace. So we should see some attention towards it from both sides. Seeing that attention, we have the Jarvan on the side of Maxlord, definitely having a little early game potential. Where does he find this for Misfits? Where is the best place to go? I mean, I certainly think that you can get over to those side lanes. It depends on where pressure is, but you know, for Power of Evil and Maxlor, I think there's a lot of onus for them to go as this team you know, up to the side lanes, try to get something done. I do think that if Huni is pushing on Jace, he could be susceptible, and that's somewhere yeah. we can see them try to make a three-man play. All right, about to be onto the rift. Our second quarterfinal matchup almost underway. SK Telecom T1 versus Misfits Gaming from Challenger to World Stage. Trying to make an impact on the league scene here. And the team is more than ready with social media tweets and confidence. <laughs> and, and ready I, to win. I'd say they've already made their impact, right? They've made their mark on this tournament. This team has had such incredible improvement throughout the year and really has uh, shown that they're not to be underestimated. And it's been, again, a fantastic year after they joined in the spring split, qualified through Challenger. The team went to Korea to boot camp for a full month. They picked up Kakao, they found Power Vivo as well. And then, of course, they had Hansama, they had Alfari and Igna already. Spring Split was okay for Misfits. They made it into playoffs. They couldn't make it all the way to the final. Ended up swapping out the jungler. Maxwell came in as a big shot call, the big leader. And while it took some time for them during the summer split to really reach their level, they made it all the way to the final. And then now they made it all the way to the quarterfinal at Worlds as well. And they've, they've been underestimated the entire way. No one actually predicted Misfits to be the team who could sit here and now challenge H2K or SKT. That was a little bit of European in there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the biggest thing for me now is seeing can they go that next step, right? Because in that finals when they made it against G2, against this top quality team who had time to prepare, they were handled very well. It was a 3-0 for G2 and now going up against an even stronger team who has had time to study, who has had time to prepare. Can you challenge this team? question of, well, if Max Lore can keep his jungle pathing different from game to game, is SKT a team that very good at utilizing their subs from Easy Hoon to Faker, and now in the jungle, Peanut and Blank back and forth. They do it constantly from season to season. And both junglers starting, looks like they'll be on opposite sides then. So very important to track 
both of them. Especially Max Lowe going buff to buff here. Once he hits level 3, might try and look for an early gank, but he of course needs a little bit more before he can actually do it. Yeah, there, there is a possibility, you know, if you can actually push in bot lane, reset that, that you can gank someone like a Trundle. The Trundle is not tanky at all in the early stages of the game. Does have trouble escaping from some of these ganks if you can land something like the flash stun from Ignar. And Ignar actually going with a very kind of aggressive melee trading style. Thinking Grass the Undying is certainly atypical, but it, I think it's an adjustment because specifically of this matchup against another melee champion where you can actually get use out of your passive and having the Grasp is going to make your trades that much better. And the Caitlyn is going to be a big question here because Caitlyn came into play because she could dominate the bot lane. She could deal with these Relic Shield AD carries and these supports like Lulu Janet that could never punish her and she could just slowly take your tower. Against the Tarek there, he's actually set up to, you know, CC her and trade against the bang. Dazzle almost taking him down for explosive shot. And it looks like they're going to lose this damage trade. Wolf still going in a bit, but they say stop and we'll go back again once we can. Yeah, I mean, nice nice little bit of damage coming out at the start on Bang, but you also have to respect how much damage Trundle is doing back to you. With the auto attack reset, with Chomp reducing your AD and giving the bonus damage as well, Trundle's early damage, if you just jump on his face like that, is actually tremendous, and it's a trade of two summoners. And Ignar didn't really get a lot of value out of his exhaust here in the fight. He's not yep. running heal on the Tarek and then barrier on Hansama. They've just gone back to the traditional style before Worlds, where Hansama is bringing heal for himself, but obviously, Ignore here, he's looking at this comp from SKT and he's seeing two physical damage dealers as the main damage carries on SKT's side. And there's going to be a lot of armor stacking on Maxwell's side. There's going to be Ignore trying to do the same and then shut down the Caitlyn or the Jace with exhaust in team fights. And it's also worth mentioning, we haven't touched on it yet, but this is a Stoneborn packed Trundle. So this is for Art and Sensor. And one of the things about that is you're exceptionally squishy. So you are playing a melee champion and Trundle sometimes can have trouble contributing much if you cannot actually get up in your opponent's face. You have the pillar, you have your ultimate, but past that, you really are not contributing a lot uh, with these really squishy yep. builds if you're going to go for the Arden Sensor and Redemption. It is the pillar build, basically. All you do is you land your pillar, that applies to Stoneborn here, so when people are hitting the champion that got CC'd, they get healing back from the Earth and Rune that it, of course, puts on as a little debuff, and then you get the Arden Sensor proc for yourself. Faker, though, he's moved to the top lane. Relieving a little pressure, taking that blast oh, phone Alfari as well. Or is there. Great timing as Max Lord just left. Alfari overheating to use his scrap shield to get out of position. Talk comes in after the flash. They get turret side, and they're going to get first blood. It's those kind of plays here that can shut down Misfits early game. But keep talking about what is Max Lord going to do? Can he get a lane ahead? Well, this wasn't even about the junglers. This was just Faker pushing out his lane, moving to the top lane, and surprising Alfari up there. Yeah, grabbing the early boots on that first base makes it easier for him to get up there and not really any way for Faller to actually escape once Faker is already behind him. There's so much CC there. Huni securing the kills, flashing behind him and knocking him back in. And this is just a really nice roam uh, from Faker. See, I mean, at this point here, there's no vision of him, but it normally gets called very early when the mid laner just kind of walks out of your lane and Afari is just not expecting Faker to show up top lane and it's a very easy first fight here for SKT and it's so important for them that they stop this early snowball from Misfits. One of the biggest concerns as well for Alfari now is you are on this pushing champion, you don't have your flash available. You know, within the next few minutes, Peanut could be up there. He could be looking for a gank and when he hits level six, what about you right could bring now? up Faker and Peanut very easily here too with that Galio roam. So that's another level that they're gonna have to be worried about. So now Max Law will also have to struggle when it go when it means or when it goes towards the top side because yep. suddenly Galio ulti is there. You might lose that 2v2. Max Law and Power View might have to change their attention to the bottom side where they have to set up from this Tarek here against potentially Wolf on this trunk line. See if you can actually get some damage on this bot lane tower. Maybe a kill as well and snowball that way. Well, Alfari's build being shortened a little bit as he goes for two cloth armors to start. The players are going to be more of a slow when they actually get it into these fights. 47 to 29 in CS. As the top lane may not even see that much more love as Huni will have control of the lane. Pressure a bit towards mid, but it's just to make sure somebody has vision. And it looks like SKT wants to actually invade for the, the respawning red buff. Huni has not even purchased yet though, mm -hmm. so he's he's not that strong yet, but he is with the team. They have the Galio ultimate, and that is giving them the confidence to actually look for a play here. Alfari is six though, and in the jungle corridors, we know how strong Rumble can be. Oh, they're pinging. They want to fight here. 
Or making a move. Huni doesn't like the situation as Alfari moves down from the bot side. Remember, Huni's flash was used in the last engage. Faker tries to come in, and they are going to be able to protect each other for just a moment. Maxlor finds himself going down as Peanut routes around the back of the fight. Is the issue for Misfits when it comes to playing around the top side? You have to respect the Galio ulti and also the damage that you get early game from a Galio and even a Jace. Despite him not buying, he's still level six and the base damage hurts. Misfits lose that trade and that's now down two kills already. Very low, Han Sama trying to trade with Wolf a bit, but Bang gets the better of Ignar's HP. Wolf will just kind of stay up here in lane if they don't trade too much. And they still have a bit of control. And we talk so much about Misfits trying to get ahead in the early game. They gotta do something now. Bang's flash now down. They might be able to get the kill on the Wolf as Bang barriers out to get any protection for him. And Han Sama done. went down without getting the heal off, and yep. that is so big because that's one auto away from getting a kill on Wolf. The flash now down from all of the bot lane, from the mid laner as well. No flashes are available across the board for Misfits, and the early game really not going the way they hoped. All going horribly wrong for Misfits. That crucial first game where you're trying to show you can actually beat them early on, yep. that you can get some of that confidence, momentum for yourself. Let's see this one more time. Is the trade and Hansama just... Oh, and he even flashed there. Yeah. He's just not understanding how much damage was coming through with the Peacemaker coming through, with that guaranteed crit headshot yep. coming through. He had the early heal, and he tried to flash forward and actually land the stun, but wasn't able to get it going. And unfortunately, they are now way behind. And you can't make those kind of mistakes against SKT. Like, nope. we already know that you need to play almost the perfect game to beat them. Max was getting caught. They have the jungle to themselves now. It is going to be Ignar trying to come back, though. Han Sama has returned to lane, and you have Power of Evil just in the side. Realm Warp comes in. Peanut and Wolf are going to be in a bad spot as Bang just inching into the fight. They lose Wolf, and it looks like Faker's going to be short on the help as well. Atar comes in to stop Han Sama in his tracks and possibly put him down. Peanut thinking about going back in as Bang can trade more damage from the bot side, and Faker staves off another kill. They may want it, though. Winds of War just short from hitting Han Sama, and they're going to back off from this. Misfits do get a kill. They push them out of the jungle, so something over working for them uh, could give them a little bit of confidence, but we'll see if they can get any more. SKT did get some vision down in the jungle, and Galio Ultimate is almost back up, so they're going to have to pay the respect over to Faker. All right, one kill back here. Still, Misfits Gaming, definitely not the start they were looking for. Right now, almost down 2,000 gold. The Caitlyn in the bot lane, just farming, Ooh. not getting any damage on the tower, but not getting shut down either. Power of Evil. I do what he can in mid lane, but it's so hard against Galio. It certainly is, and SKT wanted to go for this aggressive early invade, but you know the Rise ultimates that you had talked about earlier actually did come very heavily into play because SKT is making this move without Galio ultimate being up. So despite the fact that they get a lot of damage down early, the Rise roam comes in. First. Yeah, and also we have Bang right now returning from base. Just uh, an over aggressive play here from SKT, yep. making. A mistake on their side, getting punished for it instantly. And Sama hoping you get a second kill on the way out. But because of Fager's uh, early taunt here, catches the Tristana instantly and blocks any incoming damage. Good for Power of Evil as Fager was able to get an early roam, get that kill in. One almost delivered to Power of Evil there. And not sure that's going to happen very much more as SKT play a little bit safer in those uh, engages. It's also a little bit concerning when you're looking up at the top lane for Alfari because so much you talk about Rumble, getting early spell penetration, being able to get this level two ultimate and being super powerful around that timing. And that's really when Rumble does reign supreme. But because he's been put behind, he's yeah. into this kind of full on defensive build, likely building towards the Seekers now. And with Seekers and Tabbies, your damage is a lot lower. You do still have the base damage working up for you, but spell penetration really is an important part of Rumble. Rumble has become basically a snowball pick, as you're highlighting, because we know in the late game, there'll be redemption, there'll be these huge locket shields, and they're just gonna block most of his ulti damage. Yep. So if he's not doing well in the mid game, in the upcoming team fights we're going to have in the next 10 to 15 minutes, the pick kind of has no place all of a sudden, but all their flex picks from SKT in this pick and ban phase really put Misfits in a tough spot, because they were looking at a Galio and a Trundle being, okay, they can both actually go top lane, one can go support, one can go mid lane, and then they lock in this rumble, and suddenly Jace comes in as a top lane surprise, and oh, now they diving. Looney going for the dive, Faker knows he can come in, Alfari tries to get just away from the turret, dodging out on the top, but knocked back in, and Faker picks up kill number two. Even Roams again, back up to the top lane here from Faker, and you talked about how SKT has not been playing from Huni. they've been letting him 
be alone by himself in a side lane, making his plays, but this game, they are putting him ahead and they're showing that they can play all of these different styles. They know down the bot lane that Bang and Wolf just wants to survive. They know there's a winning lane, top lane, they can try and utilize. And it's this Galio pick. Azale, you set this in the pick and ban phase, giving Galio over to a team like SKT. It's so scary. And Vega right now, he's part of everything. Yeah, and I mean, not only just the defensive capabilities, but obviously how aggressively you can make this. This is diving into a rumble. Unfortunately, the early equalizer not really paying dividends there for Alfari as Cooney's kind of just jumping out of it. I don't think there's any escaping this play. Exactly. The first gank was just Faker walking to top lane. The second one now is like, well, I pushed my lane. I've ulted to basically go to the top lane again. And we say we say scary. We say, but why? Why is Galio so scary and then in the hands of SKT? Because Galio is such a stable pick. It's a tank that has strong wave clear. It's a tank that has super high early game impact, a lot of crowd control. You can not only control your lane through your wave push, you can then move to the side lanes. You have this easy response. Anytime the team wants to do something on the map, you press R. You can shut that down. Anytime you want to do something aggressive on the map, you simply press R. You can set it up. So really, in the early game, I just think that Galio reigns supreme. Also worth adding for the late game fights, he has a massive AoE taunt, which is so valuable because you have these backline carries you want to protect and Galio can do that so well or you can catch the enemy. Let's see what happens here. Ansama going aggressive again. Teleport's coming in from the top side. Don't even know if they need it. Ace in the hole tries to get hit. Cosmic Radiance comes down. And There's four like here. They're going to go for the dive. For now says Juaniel dogs out on one. Hansama gets taken down as Faker now 3-0-1. Five kills on the board for SKT. You thought Faker needed his ulti to help the side lanes. <laughs> has a teleport as well. Why not? He's straight down into the bottom lane. Misfits are trying to be aggressive in the side lanes and Galio punishes them again. And this is just another problem with Ryze in these early stages. Yes, Ryze can be strong in these skirmishes, but how can yeah. he ever get to them when he's constantly pushed in by this Galio, when he's not able to actually access these side lanes and when he's forced into the cleanse versus the teleport. So really things going so well for SKT in the early game. And with these item completions coming through, it's just bad news goes to worse. I mean, Huni already has a tier and a full black cleaver, and it's going to be crushing this item. Faker gets caught. I don't know if he's going to be able to make it out of this. It looks good as he just walks down. Huni says, yeah, we can walk out of this, and Alfari gets pulled out of lane. As they start to rotate back, it's going to be Han Sama up there. Yeah, I mean, there's three men hitting Faker, but where's the damage, right? Yeah, it's exactly. mostly magic damage coming through from Power of Evil, and this guy's already on his Mercury Treads, already has the Adaptive Helm. And Galio has so much innate damage reduction through the passive, through the taunt passive when you're channeling it as well, that you need so much more to ever be able to threaten them. We are only 15 minutes into the first game of this series, and the SKT War Machine is steamrolling over Misfits. This is not how it's supposed to go for Misfits if they want to do anything in this best of five against SK Telecom. And right now, it's an uphill battle. They need to find some opening, but they're not winning any of the lanes. Yeah, and, and it's really problematic because as you talked about, this is not the way the Misfits are supposed to have these games go, right? It's all about their early game strength. We've talked a lot about that. We haven't talked a lot about how SKT wins even when they are behind. They're 3-1 and one from behind this tournament, and now they have a big lead. Ah, That's so they must so lose scary. when they get ahead. That's <laughs> the strategy. There we go. There you go. That's how it works. Locking down this one. Peanut able to get that movement all. Zone them out with that six from Sejuani, and they're able to get themselves into position. This now gives that 4,000 gold lead to SKT. And you can see what the average gold difference here between the two teams is in that group stage. Exactly. Misfits typically are ahead around the 15, 20 minute mark, but they can still lose. Let's see what happens here. Power Weeble, Max Lore. Bang feeling good as Faker comes in. Shots onto Max Lore. Looks like they'll keep the focus, even if Cosmic Radiance comes down. They turn out to Alpha. Right, no damage from the Equalizer comes in as Bang goes over the wall to take the 1v1. And Han Sam and the rest of the team turn tied. They have to leave Alfari. Eight to one, SKT, 16 minutes in. There's just no damage there for the Misfits. Faker comes in with the ultimate again, shutting them down completely. They get three kills. They're going to get the Rift Herald. They're pushing multiple lanes here as well. Jace will likely be able to knock down the mid turret. They can get the top turret and even use that Rift Herald to threaten a tier two. It's like Misfits getting so desperate, they just Took whatever fight they could actually find, but SKT were ready. Every single member was there, reacting in time, and they get more kills, more towers. Eight 
thousand gold lead. It also catapults them ahead once they start to have these vision, these towers. You have Jace able to take them down very fast. Bang as well can do that from a safe distance very quickly. And you have a huge front line to stand in front of you if you even do feel trouble. 31.7 to 24.1. It's a really good point. I mean, Jace in those side lanes with the W, giving you all those extra attacks. Yeah. You are knocking down these hurts so incredibly fast. And we saw how Huni could perform in side lanes you know, against Cloud9, knocking down turrets. If he ever gets time, he's going to be a menace. And here's the fight again. As you said, it does feel like Misfits just are trying to force anything. Yeah, they were just so desperate here. Power Weaver jumping in with Maxwell before the dual lane was there, before Fire could even TP in. Doomed before the fight even started after Misfits called for that engage. And SKT pick up a bunch of easy kills on the way out. Definitely believe. You guys are right. Misfits giving a lot of consideration to always going. We see it from Han Sama in the bot lane. Those summoners are up. The rocket jump is forward. Ignar's there with Cosmic Radiance, as, as well as Maxlore. They're behind so much gold, still trying to just take that blue. Get a little bit back, and they're getting in trouble for it. And Han Sama, you know, speak a little bit about him as he may be caught out here. Ooh. Let's have Ignar for a moment, but Baker's going to take quite a while to go down. And at this point, it's enough time for the team to get there and make it another SKT fight. Yeah, Han Sama has just been such an aggressive player throughout the tournament. He's actually second in forward percentage, meaning time spent across half, essentially. Only second to iBoy, who's now no longer yeah. with us. So <laughs> he has really been playing this aggressive play style and making it work for himself yeah. throughout the tournament. But it's so tough when you're playing against players as strong as SKT and when they're on a Caitlyn. I mean, you put Bang on this lane dominant champion, and the Trundle is a solid matchup into Tarek, and then becomes extremely difficult. And we had before this game here during the group stage, SKT picked up nine kills before 15 minutes in the six games they played in total. So they were very inactive. They picked scaling lanes. They allowed yeah. the enemy teams to push them down and force SKT to kind of defend for a while before getting that big late game team fight. In a game like this here, where Faker and Huni are able to get a huge advantage top lane so early and then switch it down to bot lane right after, they're never gonna be behind. They're never gonna have to defend. They can just play full on aggression. And that kind of stuff is Hoonie's bread and butter. We see him play in the tanks and it's all here and there, not getting much resource here. Faker to his lane first. Faker to Hooney. Hooney 203. Faker's 304. Those side lanes are so huge and already hitting on the inhibitors. Sub 20 minutes. He's just gonna kill the inhibitor or dive. Oh, that's the ultimate coming in from Peanut, but Alfari doesn't look like he's gonna make it much farther. Hooney standing on the equalizer has to get out. Shock blast just on the coattails of Alfari as Rift Herald is taking down mid. There is so much on Misfit's plate and they don't know what to go for first. I mean, this is just complete dominance from SKT, almost knocking down the inhibitor turret as that Rift Herald is pushing mid. They knock down the tier two. They put damage on the mid inhibitor as well. And this game just feels like it's completely out of control. 10,000 gold lead before 20 minutes and it's hard to see a world in which any team comes back from this, yep. let alone Misfits against SKT. Oh, for sure. Misfits late game, definitely been an issue doing well. So doing even the EU LCS where they have struggled that part of the game, which is, of course, why we keep talking about them getting early leads if they want to win this series here. But for now, there's going to be five players on your screen. There's going to be a coach backstage all thinking about next game. What do we need to change here? Okay, Gallier, that was a huge issue. We couldn't yeah. deal with it. All the flex picks were an issue as well for Misfits, and they gotta change something up already for the next game. And to me, it's it's about having those aggressive lanes, those winning lanes. You talk about Ignar as a playmaker, and while Tarek is a great pick, that's much more of a late game, a team fight style, or even a mid game team fight style. It's not this Blitzcrank or this Thresh who's gonna be the playmaker and really be explosive in lane, but we'll have to see what they can make happen here as the Baron is on the map, and SKT has full side lane control. Uh, they're going to have to be very careful or Hooney's going to be knocking down their inhibitor. It's really crazy to think of the SKT power, the history they've created for themselves and a very strong team, a team that can come back. Just in the group stage, they were also down 10,000 gold, but it wasn't they're out of this game. It was a Rakan Ori ultimate. Here for Misfits, it's hard to find in this composition. It's hard to even see coming from the beginning of the game. Will they be able to make anything work now? And Koma has talked about the fact that, that SKT uses group stage yeah. to scout out other teams to figure out what their weaknesses are, and then they look to improve upon them, right? They're identifying weaknesses. They're drafting more towards early game already in this first game here against Misfits. And you know, for all the criticism that they have gotten about their early game, look at what they are showing us so far. And it's not the first time we've seen them 
have issues in group stages. I think back to every uh, year is the weakest year. Every year we're like, oh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm seeing a weakness right there. They're bleeding at the moment. There, there's a chance maybe. Obviously with Misfits, not a lot of people were looking at them being the big giant slayers here. Though people thought at least Misfits could challenge in the first game and not been the case here. That mentality is still there for Misfits. We see them trying. We see them getting themselves the into death positions rush. that could make things work. 22 minutes in, Misfits get a fight right onto Bang on the backside. Han Sama jumps forward, but he's blocked out by Cataclysm as Cosmic Radiance comes down along with Faker. And Bang's on the backside, able to deliver in just a few shots. And Han Sama's in the ground. Power of Evil, the rest of the team trying to realm warp out. He makes it along with Max Lord, but Alfari left in the back, taunted up and taken down by SKT. Once again, we see Misfits try and see if they can maybe pull off a trap or creative play to get something back here, but they just do not have the damage or the members there in time to actually kill Bang. And no, he's still alive, uh, buying a bit of time for himself. But the rest of SKT, they're starting Baron. Yeah, they're already on Baron. You can see Faker is pushing in the waves in mid and in bot, getting more damage down on those turrets. Oh. And Wolf is even going to claim a kill for himself here, adding insult to injury. Hits him on the pillar, throws down the subjugate. Baron falls, it goes to SKT, and a kill for Wolf coming up at some point if the team doesn't make it here off home guards first. Oh, Peanut's going to steal it. Oh, he's trying to Don't get it, take it away from him. <laughs> He'll secure ah, Hoony. The unexpected shock blast. All right, now it's time to see how fast can SAT close this one out. 13,000 gold lead and the Baron buff. All their items are coming in with the yeah. completions. There's nothing really to threaten them, and they're just going to look to push in here, and we'll see how quickly can they end the game. Bang looking to pick up the resources on the side of Misfits as well. They don't even own their half of the jungle. And they only have one more turret on the top side before it is back to those inhibitor turrets. Two mountain drakes along with this Caitlyn Jace comp as well. It is just adding insult to injury here. 11 to 1. Just under 25 minutes for SKT as they look at Misfits base. Waiting for Huni to push that bottom lane at the moment. Also waiting for the wave to hit the tower up in top lane. Let's get all the outer turrets out of the way. And then you just gotta break open at least one lane at a time. There's a tower in the bot lane near that inhib that's very low. A few hits from Huni and it's down and he can start going for inhib. And Misfits might look to try and kill Huni. I think you have to force. Misfits only chance is forcing something 5v3, 5v1 even. <laughs> try to kill Huni off immediately, but already oh, Huni's on retreat. Going dazzle up to that Cataclysm as well. Doesn't look like you're gonna get much out of the Equalizer as Huni's into a safe spot. Good ult from Peanut as they lock down their first target. That's Max Lore. Han Sama falls quickly right after, and it looks like Baker is not gonna let this one end until they get to the fountain. The rest of SKT's inside the base, and Ignar's the next in their eyes right after Power of Evil. The first inhibitor will fall. SKT just wanted another fight so they could win that fight, push all the way for the Nexus. Don't need to spend time getting an all the inhib. Just finish the game. Looking at 25 minutes for the first matchup here. Alfari's doing what he can, going for broke. But SKT's already got that for themselves. 16 to 1, 25 minutes in. Game one to SKT over Misfits. And almost a perfect game there. Only the one kill given over. No turrets, no dragons, nothing happening for Misfits. So now, if you're Misfits, it's a full reset. Completely ignore this game even happened, but still look at the gal you pick from this draft and say, okay, this was a huge issue. They could not play against Fagus Galio. He was part of all the early kills we saw in this game here. And after that, you also got to talk about nerves. We saw suddenly people dying without using heal, something we haven't seen during the group stages. We saw Faker go missing and no one seemed to call it. A lot of issues right there for Misfits. They got to fix that completely for game two if they want to do anything. I mean, it's such a next level of pressure when you're on this massive stage in a best of five against the best team of all time. Knowing these guys' reputation it's got to put a little bit of fear into you. Oh, for sure. I mean, SKT are very nervous. <laughs> when you think about those, you're talking about not calling the, the bat or calling the Mias and whatnot when Faker was gone. That was his first back. You know, you only think he's back. You don't think to say he's going to leave lane. So it's the very small things that should be considered, those second nature things. You come into every game. They're out of lane. they got to be gone. You're exactly right. And it's scary to see that Misfits is kind of fumbling on those right off the bat.
I mean, you have to do everything right against SKT to stand a chance. And I'd love to see Misfits go for a full early game, get Ignar on a playmaker, no see Galio. if he can make something happen, get rid of the Galio, get a Blitz, get a Thresh, get something, and try to make some early plays. I think everybody agrees on the Galio. We'll check in with the analyst as that game one and how that game one played out as we send it over. And thank you very much, Rio. Deficio hit the nail on the head. The nerves getting to SKT there, dropping a single kill in yeah. their first game in this best of five series. But in all reality, that Woo. was a crushing, crushing game out of SK Telecom to open the series. But for Misfits, a lot of questions around the strategy that they brought in here for game one. Yeah, so the one thing at the very end is the rise pick was exactly what SKT wanted to play against, so you can itemize more efficiently on the early game Galio, which is like just the final uh, nail in the coffin to what I think was a pretty disastrous draft. Yeah, there were other parts to it as well, Jet. Specifically, when Misfits fully committed to Tarek and J4 in the first round, the Trundle pick we saw from SKT, it was a true flex. Back when we had Tarek in the meta, Trundle was a good matchup into it. It's a very safe one there. So already they have flex picks. They have the Galio as a second round pick in the first round of the draft. I know that's confusing, but they already had the Sejuani locked in. In general, I feel like SK Telecom outpicked. And a small point here and what I kind of took away was people will say that SK Telecom's early game was weak in groups. And it's true, but they weren't picking for early game. So it's a kind of a... It's a subtle point, but SK Telecom were not playing a strong early game, but they weren't picking for it either. It's not that SK Telecom can't play early game. We know they can, and this is the sort of game where you see those adjustments, and suddenly the results, it was hard to watch. I mean, it was really just a question of intention versus a bad read on the meta, which we normally would never say about SKT. They've certainly proven themselves, but I have to agree. I mean, I'm never one of those people that says, you know, that 100% a team just absolutely lost a draft where there's nothing that they can do here. I just don't fundamentally really believe in that. I think there's always options, except for this game. I look at this, I'm like, this was 100% lost from the draft phase. It wasn't just the Galio, it wasn't just the Tarek, it wasn't just the Rise. Like, it was all three of those things in, in conjunction. And why aren't we playing Lucian into Galio? The LPL, it's the go-to pick. It was an option here for Power of Evil. Like, I understand- He's played it before. I understand the beauty of like having hard CC and Jarvan. You're just like, let's camp Faker's lane. Oh God, we can't kill him. He's on Galio. And we yeah. saw the potency of this Galio pick throughout the early game, right? The potential to roam to the side lanes and affect the map while Misfits is trying to make plays. And we'll take a look at the early action as it played out in this game, brought to you by Acer Predator. Now, the reason that Faker actually gets the jump up here, and this is seconds before Maxlar has gone, is because he teleports back to the lane. So it's the TP that saves in the extra seconds where Power of Evil isn't into the lane, shoves the wave, and then wanders top. Yeah, that gank also forced the Rumble into a defensive build, which had more implications later down the road. Then once you're level six on Galio, especially when you're trying to make plays around the mid lane, it just gives you such an advantage that SKT was able to capitalize on. I mean, it's basically three winning lanes for SKT. We already saw Sejuani in these games. When you actually are able to move aggressively on Sejuani, the action rotates around you. It was a bloodbath early, and there really was no escape. And quickly touching back to that top lane point about Rumble then having to itemize defensively, I think that was a huge blow to Misfits, because again, you go back to draft, what are their options? Where can they gank lanes? It was really only around that Rumble and that Jarvan combo to get the 2v2 kill pressure top. Once that wasn't available, they were done. Yeah, and I want to speak to those gold leads that we see on the screen. Nearly 10,000 gold at 20 minutes. You could say EDG level early games from SKT, but there's so much of a different team, and so much more complete and when we were thinking about like upset potential coming into this series we we're thinking well Longju was the favorites they had a great group stage and they lost but we should be thinking about group stage to bracket stage in this words of Samsung and SKT being very similar teams that can adapt to the meta and still have all those late game fundamentals on lockdown SKT has been a better version of Samsung the whole year so if we're gonna say Samsung is now favored in this meta SKT's on a whole nother level. Well, that's what speaks to me, right? You talk about building a 9K lead similar to the way that EDG was able to do that. Well, you pair that with SKT's ability to close, and it's no surprise that with a 10K gold lead, they are, they close it in just five minutes more. I mean, multiple carries here are doubling the gold earned by the opponents. It felt over at draft, but of course, if you play out a certain strategy a certain way, things can go in, but very quickly, it escalates. Then since we've identified draft as being probably the major issue here, yeah. I want to talk about where the adjustments can be found for game two in Misfits. Yeah, so I think SKT was a favorable draft, but like you put the teams with different compositions, there's still a good chance SKT wins that game. Like, yes, Misfits had a low chance with that draft, but SKT can still win even with bad drafts as we saw in the yes. group stage. Going into the next game, uh, I want to see 
a total redo for Misfits. They got, I think, completely surprised that SKT was trying to go early game, and that almost forced them, like, they were ready to be like, all right, we're going to be proactive in the early game. It's like, well, now we have the scaling comp, so it's not really a favorable play to do so. So uh, I think they will be less surprised by the draft from SKT and need to think about picking optimally. I think if they get into an early game's arms race, they're going to end up losing late to SKT. They just need to try and make sure that they're getting the best value out of their picks. For me, it's a uh, focus on Ignar. I think Deficio mentioned it a couple times during the, ca or the cast, but I do agree. Get him on a more playmaking-oriented champion. He was doing good things with the Taric, but it wasn't really enough. And I still feel that Bang and Wolf are, are kind of the area that if you just throw Maxlor down there with Ignar and get Han Salmon going, that it's probably going to be the best case of success for them. And we'll see if they change up sides. SK Telecom picked blue just like Longju did yesterday, which was a surprise for Longju. They couldn't carry it through. SK Telecom certainly could. I didn't like Misfits focusing on the supports on red side. When you ban Janna on blue, you do draw the Lulu ban, but going for Rakan as well, sure it's denying a playmaker, but by then, it felt like SK Telecom almost had a blind pick draft with what ended up. I can confirm for you that Misfits has chosen blue side. There will be no substitutions here for game yeah. two. Let's see what that does to this discussion. And this conversation, I don't actually think it does much. It just means that if they want to pick in a similar style of SKT, they can. They can save their AD carry until second phase to try and get a counter pick. But what SKT did to Misfits ment mentally in that game is an example of how hard it is to play against SKT. Yeah. Because you know they're so great at playing defense and that they will outscale you if given the chance. So then you think, okay, we have to pick early game champions. But if all you do is go all in early game against SKT, they're going to beat you with scaling. But they just beat you with early game. So they so quickly destroy you mentally, and it makes it feel like you don't have any options. They, so I don't know what Misfits is going to do. They put you in what feels like a no-win situation, exactly. right? And so you're kind of grasping at straws for how exactly can we find a hole in, you know, in the play style and strategies of the best team in the world. And so, again, I think that's where we always fall back on that. Well, well, then you just have to index early. You have to hope that you find it yourself that 10K goalie to 20 minutes that will become insurmountable or gives you enough allowances to make mistakes and yet still close the game. You just turn the nameplates off, frankly, and you just go back to playing Misfits, like what made their fans fall in love with them over yep. the group stage, which is like the Blitzcrank stuff. You just go ham, you go crazy, you go wild. I think set up a playmaker, set up a lane you can gank or a jungler that can warp the sense of the game because as SKT controls tempo, they win. All right, well, there you have it. We've got game two of SKT versus Misfits coming up right after the break. Before we go, sometimes you have a rough start on the rift. Sometimes the camp on your lane is more like a long-term lease. And while you can't always control how the early game plays out, you can control how it affects you. Take a note from the first Blood King, Yankos, as he shows us what it means to be tilt-proof. <laughs> 